Hey, everybody. How you doing? I'm Todd Reynolds, and it is uh, May... May 23rd, 2020. And it is a Saturday, and it's 1.30. So if you are not watching this at May... Uh, whatever it was that I just said it was. Wow. May 23rd on 2020 on a Saturday at 1.30, then you are not watching this live, which is all cool because then you're still watching it. And I really, really thank you for joining me. It's just that I won't be able to respond to your comments in real time. But do leave them because we love to hear from you. Anyway, I'm going to put my viola down here just because, you know. Uh, so how are you? I um, This is our third and last day of live streaming this week, which is also the first week that I've ever live streamed. And so uh, we're going to begin it, uh, we're going to end it, like we began it, which is with no agenda and no meaning and no, uh, no anything really to, uh, to get in the way of me just kind of being with you. But we played a little bit, and that was awesome. That was fun. I, I hadn't, uh, hadn't played on a live stream before, so another, another new thing. So let me see who's on the chat so as to say hi. Hey, Scott. Scott Corey. Talk about a one-man band. Michael Oatman. Wow. Haven't seen Michael in a, in a long time. Teaches architecture at, uh, in the architecture department at, at uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, RPI. Casey Molino Dunn. Casey and I had a lovely chat today. Yeah, he's, um, he's on board with the Music Academy of the West, which is actually moving their entire summer program online. It's going to be virtual. So uh, that, that, was, that was their power move, I'll tell you. It's kind of awesome. He shared with me some of the guests that they have. Beth Morrison is the, uh, from Beth Morrison Productions is going to be the keynote speaker. There's lots of good stuff happening out there, and Casey is kind of at the heart of it. He also is at the heart of our entrepreneurial uh, program at Manhattan School of Music, so that's why Casey and I know each other. Jeff Young. My God, still in, still in Boston, Jeff? Another, uh, another fabulous fiddle player and imp improviser and composer. Uh, Stefan Zeichner. Hey, Stefan Schmolovitz. I always say Schmolovitz. Sorry, Schmolovitz. Schmolovitz. Yeah. Hi, Stefan. How are you? Man. Yeah. Uh, Stefan made a program that you can actually find on his website. It's called Canaxis. Let me spell it for you. Actually, maybe Isabel will put it in the chat. Uh, I think it's at Canaxis.com. K-E-N-A-X-I-S. Canaxis.com. A wonderful program that is actually written in Max. I'm sure Stefan's written more software since then, but another violist and performer. I, I just played viola for you, Stefan. I'm totally self-conscious here. Wow, I, I don't play viola much. Marianne Petit. Hey, Marianne, how are you doing? Marianne is a wonderful author and of incredible artistic pop-up books uh, and a tie from, from long ago. Lizette Santiago. Hey, Lizette. David Linton. Hey. Hey, Skip. Yeah, but you know what? 
you didn't really miss me playing because you know it comes back around. Am I on YouTube? I have no if if I'm on YouTube or not, but we've been having problems streaming to YouTube and I we don't understand it yet. Part of part of what I will share that we learned. Sorry? It's sending data. It's sending data, says restream. Let's just say that I need help. Hmm. So uh Isabel is over there manning the uh the uh comments and we're here in our in our beautiful uh beautiful environment of North Adams where it's just gorgeous. Catherine Seven Fox. Hey, Catherine. Thanks for joining us today. Sami Abadi from Argentina. I still owe you a video, Sami, video, Sami, and I will send you a video. And uh, Stephen David Beck. Hey, Stephen. So we're here, we're here today and we've been here, you know, um, Monday and Thursday and this is our Saturday. This was an interesting, an interesting week on so many different counts. But the thing, uh, the thing that was most interesting is it's always been kind of hard for me to go live. I see people go live all the time. And you know, there's so many people that are YouTube content creators. And especially during this time of, uh, during this time of quasi, uh, okay, complete isolation. Lots of folks have taken to their iPad apps and acapella and, and all these wonderful ways of working with each other. I myself have done a lot with Jason Robert Brown with Bang on the Can to do uh, production from home and video from home. Um, Ashley Bathgate, I think I've mentioned before, has been a constant companion in, in that kind of journey. And here we are. And on Monday, I finally decided to just press the damn button. It's uh, kind of crazy making for me a little bit. A little, uh, you know, I'm aware. I'm aware of being out there so much. I used to be on a stage all the time and being on a stage is kind of no big deal after doing it for so many years, but somehow a camera presented some stops for me and I had to start thinking about how to, how to relate to you all in this different way. So on Monday, I just pressed the button and press the button is about to become a moniker of mine because it really was a rewarding thing. Seeing everybody, talking to everybody now, uh, seeing you all here. So thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us, especially those of you who've been with us, um, each, each, uh, day that we've been here. Really, really appreciate your presence. And it's really just lovely to see you because, uh, knowing that you're there <laughs> and being able to respond in real time, Catherine, you can relate. Tell me more. Tell me more. Have you been doing the same thing? I know uh, Skip has been, uh, Skip is a, if you don't know Skip Shirey, just find your way through, S-X-I-P, find your way to Skip because one of the most uh, brilliant creative collaborators, I have the good fortune to uh, to call my friend and, and dear close colleague. So anyway, he's been, uh, he, he's been making some content, making some, uh, some YouTube videos with his beautiful wife who's a who's a, a mover dancer and his beautiful new baby and so they've been doing some stuff together as a trio it's wonderful fantastic so go go check him out hey bob zubricki i saw your photo the other day bob it was amazing bob is bob is 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 you know somebody i've grown up only known known i have only known as completely clean shaven just you know just a, a beautiful man. Now he's a beautiful man with a huge beard, at least as I think I saw you the other day, right, Bob? Uh, anyway, yeah, thank you for your thank you for your kind words, Bob. And um, Stefan, you had a hard time creating. Now that's now this is a this is a really interesting uh, an interesting concept, you know. Um, hey Tracy, 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 Tracy Sharp. Sister Tracy Sharp is the person on this feed who I have known the longest. Tracy was, I had a group of three best friends in my sophomore year of high school and Tracy was there. Thanks for being here today, Tracy. It's really lovely to see you too. Um, Stefan, creating. You know, early on in this in this COVID process, uh, was it the Chronicle, Chronicle of Higher Education? Do you think you could find that it, it's Chronicle of Higher Education, and it's about it's about you don't need to create right now. It was on that spreadsheet that we used for the last uh, online workshop. Um, the uh, this woman wrote this incredible article about not being worried 
um, not being worried about not creating now. And I'm a boy, am I a huge proponent of that? You know, there's been tons and tons of conversation of how we convert, how we move to another paradigm. And then about, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, trying to, trying to make something. And I'm one of the ones who decided that I was not going to try to do anything. And instead, I was going to try to get quieter rather than amplify louder. I did that for a long time. And uh, somewhat because Isabel and I have been really digging down ever since December into mindfulness practice, awareness practice. You, you can also call it meditation, but we've been actually digging down into forming a practice for ourselves. It changed the way that, of course, that we approached this. Uh, I'm a pretty much a chronic anxiety sufferer. I can go to the end of the world in like two steps and don't get me the least bit high or it gets worse. So, uh, but somehow there's a level of groundedness in being able to separate your thoughts and uh, your reactivity from the reality of what's going on right now. So thankfully, uh, Stefan, it's been a little bit easier for, for us than I kind of had anticipated it would be. And I'm so grateful and thankful, but yet, no, I haven't made anything either. I haven't made anything for myself. I've been in the studio constantly recording for people who wanted to make stuff, which has been so great because it got me playing again and got me making again on, and connected also to others. And then the other thing that it provided was it provided me a real kick in the pants to say, hey, how do you film yourself? How do you deal with this visual stuff? I, I spent literally weeks, and Isabel can attest to this, kind of fretting, that, that, that worried, anxious fretting about the idea that now I had to look in the camera when I've always looked out at an audience. And you know, when, when we as performers, any of you on the feed, and there are lots of you who are, um, yeah, yeah, Jeff Young, thank you for posting that. Um, um, the I Care If You Listen link, that's another great article. Um, we, when you think about it, right, all of us who are performers, and this, I, I just give me some feedback on this if, you, um, if it occurs to you. But this is the way I think about it. When I'm on stage, I'm looking usually out into black because the lights are on this way. But even if I don't look out into black, how many of us who are performers close our eyes when we're performing? It's not to get away, it's not to avoid, but it's actually to kind of really go inside as much as we can, right? So there's this idea that I have, I haven't, I've it's come to me kind of through Sam Harris, one of the folks that we use to, to um, not use, but have benefited from in terms of mindfulness practice. This idea that, that when you're looking out, whether your eyes are closed or whatever, your you know, consciousness is just appearing in front of you. So I've always felt energy from the audience, but I've not always been able to see, see them. But I've kind of been looking out into consciousness, which is a, a kind of a new concept, a very, very new concept for me. And now looking into a lens to be with people is equally new. So that's kind of why we, coming back to the subject, that's why we chose to do this, was to just get acquainted with the lens and acquainted with a different way of focus. Um, that's not a pun. And, uh, and to really, and also just to find a new way of being with people, which we have done all because of you guys. So yeah. Stefan, I didn't create much on my own, but boy, I've walked, I've, uh, Isabel and I both have walked an incredible path through this. Not that it's over. I mean, we don't know what's coming next. It's another reason why I like to focus on the idea of staying flexible and being okay in the not knowing. So that's kind of where we are. So after a week, here we are at our last, at our last day of live streaming for the week with this incredibly low bar. The low bar was push the button, be with people, get used to your new software, and to being with a camera in lieu of an audience, and instead focus on like being with people in a, in a different way. So that's, here we are. Yes, Bob, not, yeah, I know, it's not a huge beard. Yeah, okay, I get it. But it's a beard nonetheless, and it's beautiful, and you're beautiful. Um, yeah, Catherine, go do it. Push the button. Hmm. Diane Sullivan, sculptor up here from North Adam, is one of our 
we have a we have a, a lovely club of folks that we always go to family dinner with. We uh, call up and we go to go to one of the local res- restaurants and experience each other. Most most are visual artists, but all incredibly good friends and kind of masters in their own right. Jeff Young. Oh, oh, that was Mary's article? Oh, that's I forgot that that was Mary's article. That's fantastic. Thanks, Jeff. Steph, uh, Stefan, um, let's see. Let me see. You know, there's a way to do this. I I forget how to do this. I was just about to try to, to feature one of these comments, but I can't figure out how to do that. Right. Oh, there it is. Stefan, there we go. Yeah, I'm taking the time to focus on learning right now. It's been a nice change from somewhat from the gig life. Gig life. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The the incredible opportunity which has been afforded to each one of us to kick up the learning. That's that has been the greatest gift, you know. There are lots of reasons that I wake up grateful in the morning. Just a ton. Like more than anything else. But that's one of the biggest ones. Um the uh, opening for learning and also for contribution seems to have increased. Maybe it's just the new way. Maybe it's that we're looking at it through a new lens or a new way. Uh, but man, there's a lot of opening happening here. Um, Stefan is talking with Catherine. Um, Jeff Young, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Um, an elder friend of mine. Oh yeah, Stefan, an elder friend of mine said it probably said it beautifully about his own block. There is no there's no sing in the air. There's no song in the air. That's interesting. Wow. See, it's weird. I've another thing that has been isn't it's a really lovely thing. We're just because we live in a beautiful place and because we live among trees and because we have a dog which requires that we run him every morning and every night. We get to we get the song in the air a whole lot. That shift to nature. Oh, let me give you a give them Birdnet. If anybody's ever near birds, this there's this great app, and all the musicians will love this Birdnet dot app. It's uh it's in it's both Android and um and and iPhone. But yeah, it's a it's a bird call identifier. It listens and it gives you this uh, what is that called a sonogram? And then you just select the portion of the sonogram where you can see that it's the bird that you want that you wanted to focus on, and then it analyzes it in real time and gives you the name of the bird. I got all of a sudden really interested in bird calls when I have never cared about them except when I'm playing messy on. Anyway, um, okay, let's move on. Oh, yes, Skip. The camera is a visual microphone. Okay, now, did we need, I I guess we should just close up right now because that's just about as profound as we get, Isabel. That's kind of all, we're not going further than that. No, the camera is, yes, yes. It's all the same, right? Uh, (laughs) I was just talking to somebody about how how I miss the energy you feel from people in person without even looking at them or touching them. It's true, it's true. Although I got to say, Catherine, I'm missing so much the energy of touching people. I really am. The, just the hugging and the holding of people that we are so used to. I miss that. I miss that a lot. Um, and Elizabeth Bird from Portland. Oh, Elizabeth Bird is going live from Portland in an hour. Thanks for the encouragement. Right on. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. Uh, Gon, John Gunther. Thai food in East Village yet? Oh my God, I I don't know. Okay, so John Gunther. Okay, let me since since I since I want nobody to like look at comments and not understand what's happening. Let me explain. John Gunther is a jazz professor, horn player in uh, in Boulder, Colorado, where I sometimes go out to teach. Hi, John. Really great to to see you and love to Stephanie as well. Um, and he took me to a Thai restaurant that was just unbelievable. Great, great, great food. Well, it turns out those folks left Boulder and moved to New York to open up a Thai, a really great Thai place in the East Village. And so we kind of both know them as friends. And now I have no idea. I have no idea, John, what's happening with them. And of course, I don't live in New York anymore. So I'm not down there and I couldn't do anything anyway. And I'm sure they didn't open. I'm sure they didn't open. And I, I hope they're well. I do have a contact to them as, as you do. You can pick, a, pick up the phone and call them and, uh, and we'll figure it out. James Sampleener, 
Ah, uh, yeah, man, love you too, James. James is a, James is a Broadway legend, a pianist, and one of the just one of the most heartful, passionate musicians that I have in my life. Robbie's another one. Oh, dude, thank you. This is a great shirt. Oh, well, I should tell you the story of this shirt. Uh, maybe I'll tell you later. I love these shirts. This is a designer called, what's his name? Robert, Robert Hamilton. No, and he, Robert. Yeah, I think it is. Robert Hamilton. Robert. It's, on the, it's on the back. It's in my label. And Isabel's not going to walk over here and look <laughs> at my label because that would just be weird, wouldn't it? Or would that just be so Facebook? Um, I don't know. But anyway, uh, he's a designer. And I'll tell you the quick story of this shirt. My father, my 93-year-old father, lives in Palm Springs, California. And there is a, uh, a thrift store there called Revival. Graham, Robert Graham. Oh, it's Robert Graham. Uh, is it uh, Revival is what? I think it's called Rev Revive, Revival or something. Anyway, it's all the proceeds from the thrift store go towards AIDS research, right? So... So we, I, I went, I found, I was looking through, there was nothing there, there was nothing there, there was nothing there in the thrift store. All of a sudden, I saw these brightly colored shirts. I got two of them, $18 a piece. And they're beautiful. They're made in India and they're gorgeous. And there's out at the outlet mall up there in, where is it? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a surfing, there's a surfing lady and the whole nine, nine yards. Um, you can't see, I, I'm all backwards on my camera. Anyway, so point being, I don't want to take too much time. $18, I get out of the store, I look up, because there's a name on the label, I look up the label, this shirt was $395. This guy sells designer special limited editions for that much money. So mine was $18 though, so I felt kind of lucky. It's got um, rhinestone buttons that are purple. It's one of my favorite shirts in the world. I just don't know how I lived without this shirt. I'll tell you how, I don't wanna pay $395 for a shirt. Anyway. You ever see it they have wonderful sales sami uh we'll definitely check out that app yes oh jeff you've been in the you've been hanging out with the birds hey colin mcdonald um use your skill sets in one area of an, or, in one area or another yes absolutely skip um jeff wanted to recommend a facebook group where people have been doing some great live stream performance Open Improvisations Online Edition. And then he shares it. It's right there in the chat box for you. Oh, wait, that's not a link at all. Uh, run, by, run by a few students of mine, like a few old students of mine. That's fantastic. Marina Kipperstein, Carrie Fry, Alec. I, I know Alec's name, but I don't know him. Um, anyway, uh, there we go. So, Jeff, if you want to if you want to get a, get a link up on that and put it in the chat, I'm sure everybody would love that. Sami Abadi, the class will be transmitted via Zoom in Spanish today at 6.30 p.m. Argentina hour. I don't know what that is here. Anybody want to figure out what time that is on this coast? Um, which class, Sami? Did you just say something that I missed? Oh, I see. Sami, Sami talked about it up here and I just missed it in the chat. Yeah, okay. Cool. Wow, okay. Um, uh, yeah. It's 2.07 already. We started at 1.35. I like hanging out with you folks. This is wonderful. So let's talk for a second. So our, our, um, our goal was to go live with a low bar just to see how it felt. We did it. Here are the things we learned. Um, Restream.io, probably because of our error, doesn't necessarily stream live to Facebook, sorry, to YouTube when you think it should. Otherwise, it does. I will turn you all on since you have hung with us uh, this long. Uh, oh, I see, Sami. Oh, I see, that was after your last live. I've set a community to teach music creativity on. No way. Oh my God, I'm so sorry I, I missed that, that chat, Sami. That is amazing. There it is. I'll put it up for everybody to see. Wow, this is this is really great news, Sami. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Sami and I met in Argentina when I was performing with the Soldier String Quartet. We went out, this is so many years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. And uh, we went out to eat and there was an electric violinist playing around, you know, just around the corner inside the restaurant, doing a restaurant gig. That was Sami. Sami and I have been great friends ever since. 
he and his uh, colleague Gabi Kerpel, they uh, Sami came and stayed with me in New York. Gabi Kerpel brought De La Guarda to New York, and um, and that happened. And and my best friend, one of my best friends, Trevor Exter, took over the Gabi's position in De La Guarda. So Sami and I have a long, 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 long past. But yeah, this is this is wonderful. It's wonderful, Sami. Congratulations on that, and I wish you all the best with that. I know everybody will benefit from your teaching. Sami plays a lot of toys, very much into playing and looping toys. So anyway, we were going to, uh, we were just going to, we were just going to um, go live and see what happened. So restream, I've learned a lot about restream. I'll tell you, um, let me put this, uh, Isabel, can you do your best if you could, to, or or ping Allison Wright and find the link to her YouTube video on OBS. She just put a streaming for musicians. It's what it's called. Or or maybe anybody else, um, if anybody else on the chat has seen it. Jeff Young is posting more about this group. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. This is awesome that you that you're doing that, um, and also that you're. Plugging your Zoom duo, duo that's uh, that's that's worthwhile. Y'all can go see Jeff perform. I'll amplify that too. We're looking up Allison's thing. Allison Wright and Beck Plexus uh, uh, put this put this 24-hour live streaming record release party on from Amsterdam, and it was awesome. And then Allison was so generous. First of all, with just hanging out with a few of us to explain how they did that whole thing. I was just on the edge. I'd bought some things here and there and you know, I was, I'd gotten a camera uh, from my virtual father-in-law, Jake Holmes, who I love dearly, who's Isabel's uh, father. And he let me borrow a camera and we were moving, we were moving, we were moving, but I was still was like trying to find a capture card because they were all out every place. And what's a capture card anyway? And YouTube videos and this and that. Allison gave us a lot of knowledge on open broadcast system software, which is free kind of like the Reaper, it's like OBS and Reaper, kind of the same type of level of thing. Uh, it's awesome, deep, deep software, which can be a little bit hard to understand. But Allison made a YouTube video for everybody, so now everybody has access to it. So Isabel's going to to um, find, uh, find this uh, if she can. So Stefan asks, um, well, actually, I don't actually use OBS at all. Uh, and I'll tell you why, Stefan. So um, why use Restream over just OBS? The reason that I am using Restream right now is that I don't know any better. Um, I am simply trying to find a way to go this week just, just uh, two places at one time. That's what I want to do. And after I finish here, the software that, I'm, that I do use will post it to YouTube anyway, even if it didn't get streamed there. So um, OBS for me is a little bit of a heavy lift. And OBS is to this other software program, which I do use, which is called Ecamm Live with two M's. Ecamm Live. Um, here, I'm just going to show it to you right now. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to put it in, uh, in live demo mode right now and I think um, Isabel and well eventually she will she will confirm this um, I think whoa that's just that's some um, LSD or psilocybin or something let me uh, do that a different way um, I want you to see this is in demo mode are you seeing it eventually it she, she, will you see the desk tell me if you see the desktop come up soon because maybe I also, problem is that if I do that, you'll see the LSD effect. Well, let's just go that way, because why not? Here I am in the lower corner, you'll see the chat coming up on one on the right side of your screen. Camera adjustments on the top, scenes on the top left. I can go be, between different desktops. Um, I can show you really different, different parts of my computer. And um, there's the Restream page. Uh, yeah, I can isolate just onto a, um, hi there. I can I isolate onto a, um, just a one application also, if I want to. And I can even do this and just, you know, that was from my chat this morning with, <laughs> with uh, Casey. 
So you can. This is all stuff that you can do in um, in uh, OBS as as well. Uh, but the one thing that you can't do is you can't do some fancy camera switching with the old GoPro that you happen to have in the drawer. And uh, it, I mean, you can still do that, but I have a hardware switcher to do some of my camera switching. So there's no reason that I don't use OBS except that I started that I started to get, um, oh yeah, Brandon here. Oh my God, Brandon is the professional. I, uh, Brandon, stay, because I have some things to say to you. Um, so, so, uh, so Stefan, the reason that I don't use OBS is just because I haven't really gotten there in my learning curve yet. And Ecamm Live was easier for me to get into and their customer service was great. There's a Facebook group that was great. I was able to get up and running literally in three minutes and I've been using it ever since and I love it. I'm sure I will get to OBS and to multiple streaming and I have a feeling that Ecamm Live will start streaming multiple places without, you know, maybe under their pro level or something. Anyway, any anything, Stefan, that you that you have to say about that, which would counsel me or Jeff. Oh, look. All right. Jeff says, I found OBS to be a very heavy program on your CPU. Yes. Ableton Live and OBS at the same time has been unworkable for you. That's one of the reasons that I didn't want to, you know, venture there because I thought it might be heavy. Um, but I never got there. And these, and, and, uh, Beck, uh, Reksha and, uh, and Allison, they did theirs fantastically, but they also didn't do any like live Ableton Live stuff. They were playing videos all night. Um, Brandon Epperson helped me out. Brandon is a real professional in the, uh, the last thing I saw that, that Brandon did was, was uh, put together one of the primary things for Channel 7 or something, if I'm correct, Brandon. Anyway, he does high level video and audio stuff and he was the, one of the first people I reached out to to say, hey, what do I need? What is this capture card thing? What is this and what is that? And anyway, Brandon was super helpful. So thank you, Brandon, for I just wanted to stick around so I could say thank you to you because you're awesome and I appreciate it. And um, I'm lucky that my visual feedback just was there when you were when you were there. <laughs> that was fun. That was really fun. Um, now Andre Chumley, who you're going to see there, OBS here. Let's take a look at his his comment because this is also interesting. OBS has great camera switching. I program custom timings for each of the three cameras. Could be more, but you need to add a free plugin. That's their big flaw. Why isn't that just in the regular download? I think that's just because it's. I mean, first of all, OBS and Reaper are constantly being upgraded and and each one of them has plugins that people are writing all the time. So I think that's part of the secret of it of it being open source software. But as Jeff says, it it can be a heavy lift. And I mean, um, Brandon will also tell you, although I don't know if Brandon actually performs live a lot, but I'll I'll tell you through my work with with Max MSP, um, yeah, it's an A10 Mini Pro, my friend Brandon. That's what I got. I got a Mini Pro, and it came, it came in good time, even though they were late because of the the supply chain from China. Um, um, trying to cover all these comments. Oh, you got the Allison right. Thank you, hun. Um, uh, God, now I just got now I just got lost. Anyway. Oh, I know what I was talking about. Brandon can confirm this as well. And uh, and Jeff, this is the problem that you're having. And it's different from Windows machines to Mac machines, right? So the cores, the core, the, the computing cores, and I will probably say something a little wrong here. Maybe Brandon or somebody who knows more about uh, the laptop scene can help out with the way I explain this. But, you know, there are a certain number of cores in every laptop, computing cores. And and there's a GPU, the graphical uh processor and then there's the CPU, the um, central processing unit. And these two things are really separate and lots of stuff is offloaded on the graphic stuff. If you buy a Windows laptop or a computer which is special which is specially configured for gaming, you're going to get a super great graphics processor, right? In the Mac, everything is bottom lined, right? So it's like what what can we create to give Pretty much everybody what they need at this price point and so on. So what then happens also is that the audio and the video kind of get split up over the cores and they're not necessarily separate. And I have never, ever been been able to do audio and video at the same time. And in fact, this is the first time that I did just now um, to be able to play some light Ableton Live stuff with not a lot of processing and 
uh, and just have that be, um, you know, along with this with this one stream going out. And I and Brandon, I'm not using my A10 Mini Pro out the Ethernet uh, port yet. This this uh, thing. Let me show you what this looks like real quickly. It's kind of far away from you. Uh, let me see. Can I? No, I can't even show you. I'm kind of pointing to it there. This is not worthwhile. No, 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 honey. This the, the, because the the cables aren't long enough, and it's not even possible. What I will do, however, okay. is I will uh, just show you all. You all could probably look this up too, but I will show you right now. This is by uh, by Black Magic, and uh, I'm going to show you this this web page. So that so that you can see it. Why did it come up with Adorama? I have no idea. Um, that's not the one. Here it is. Here it is. All right. So I'm just going to um, quickly put this up on screen. Uh, let's see which one is the right desktop. There's the right desktop. There we go. So that's the A10 Mini Pro. You can put put four HDMI cables into it. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> you, are, you all are awesome. Um, and uh, uh, man, and also, what I will be able to do if I choose to, is I can go straight out of this box with my cameras and put my computer into it and then have a complete hardware switcher and have no stress on my CPU at all. So if I get to the point where I want to do a fancy Ableton Live set with a lot of processing or a fancy Max patch with a lot of processing, I may find myself going Ethernet directly out from this, from this unit. Show you the back here. Um, let's see, oh, whoops, I'm, on, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Uh, let's find the back view. There we go. There's the back view. Ethernet. USB and uh, even an HDMI out for monitoring and then four cameras in and two audio ins. Try to get a get an, um, an XLR to mini cable. That's kind of weird, but uh, I haven't I haven't even dealt with that yet. So anyway, that's that's why I am choosing to um, to go with this whole. Um, uh, sorry, with the whole. Um, a 10 mini thing plus the e, plus the ecam live thing now i do want to get out of this live demo mode you don't need to see that anymore and here's my regular camera and we're back so let me go back to the comments really quickly you all have been here a long time and i'm sure some people have dropped off because who wants to talk tech all the time right we do um uh one thing i do love is that here let's look at andre's what andre said Almost double digits of free choices. This is true. This is absolutely true. This is absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely. Let me put that up because it was such a long one. I want you all to have a chance to read it. Um, Brandon, yeah. Audio glitches are way more offensive than dropped frames. It's, it's true, especially if you're trying to listen. Although... My friend Mark Cedar was was trying to help me with the with with the sync the other day. It was kind of wild because Mark has done heavy lifting on audio and video for many years. Done so many gigs on which he had to like worry about lip syncing that he's very sensitive to things not being like completely in sync. And I right now don't even know if I'm completely in sync with you, but uh, but I'll be looking to figure it out because this this is kind of one of those constant pursuits, and somehow or other. Um, Audio seems so simple to me compared to video. I mean, you've been dealing with frame rates, variable frame rates, Brandon, forever. I don't even know how you do that. But I suppose, I suppose it's, it's experience and there's tons of gear. Um, yes, yeah, Sami, I'm not in New York City anymore. I'm up in North Adams, Massachusetts. You can do a quick Google search and find that. Yeah, Touch Designer and vMix. Brandon also recommended to me very early on that I go with vMix and I looked at vMix and, and it was just even the website just kind of like fried my brain and I was like yes but I have to get up and live tomorrow so I just went away from that for a minute and I went toward this more simple stuff the professionals use vmix wirecast um uh, other stuff like like that but here in this con sort of consumer level place that we are hey thanks I'm, I'm in sync that's good Sami 15 years of reclocking <laughs> it's so crazy yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, so Skip, oh yeah, uh, uh, so I'm I so 
uh, I don't know, a few years ago, my dear friend Graham Reynolds uh, kind of was talking to me about how he'd had a, a Windows PC built. And I did that. I followed his lead and it was a really, really good good time that I had being with Windows. One of the things that was really happening at that time was there was so much planned obsolescence talk, you know, with Apple and machines were going back and things were crapping out. It's like, and I was having audio problems and it was, it could have been anything. It could have been hardware. It could have been software. It could have been me, but I was getting really tired of Macs and really frustrated by the Mac versus PC conversation. I'm like, damn it, I'm going to buy myself a PC that'll cost a fraction of a Mac and be twice as powerful. And I did with three drives. I had an audio drive, I had a samples drive, and I had a program drive. And you know what I couldn't do? I couldn't record in the same room with it because the fan went off as soon as you opened the damn case. So I spent quite a while dealing with that, and I finally got another Mac. And um, and with this Mac, it, uh, I mean, I, I can hear the fan right now, even with this. I got to figure out fan things. Maybe, Brandon, you have some ideas there. But I used that Windows 7 computer, never crashed on me, never did a thing. Obtuse as all hell, Windows 7. I mean, give me a break. But with that particular computer, we didn't want to move to Windows 10, didn't want to reformat any drives. So I did that. But now I'm back on a Mac. And one of the things that now I really know the difference you know, I really know the difference and I don't have to proselytize and I don't have to be moralistic about it at all. But it's always a little bit of a heavier lift to conceive of how things are working on Windows. I never, after four years of using it, I never got the fluidity of working with that system as I always had with a Mac. You know, I can put it this way. I used to play um, a violin called a viome, Jean-Baptiste Viome lived in 18, in the 1800s, and my violin was from 1857. I didn't own it. It was owned by, the, by Richard Colburn, who the Colburn School was named after. That fiddle and I could never, ever do any wrong. I love my fiddle that I have now by Doug Cox of Brattleboro, Vermont. I love it. It is my fiddle. It is my joy. By the same token, I learned my college years on that viome and my fingers always want to still go there. I still haven't gotten there. So I'm back on a Mac because that's where I learned. That's what I was with in all my life. But now I would prefer to have both systems available to me at all times. And I love them both for the various things they do. And yes, you can get a more powerful computer in a Windows machine. You can jack it up. I'm sure that somebody's saying this in the... Uh, um, Oh, you hate Windows, Brandon. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're liking it. So, okay. There you go. And Linux is the cleanest. Right. Linux. Linux. Um, both is best. Yeah. Great. Oh, thank you for all this input. Water cooling. Okay. Wait a second. I missed some comments. Brandon. Okay. Let me see where this starts. Oh, wow. This is great. Um, oh, yes. I could never. This, this one right here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. Um, um, let's see. Brandon says, unfortunately the build quality on just about every single one dies in a few years. Are you talking about the windows Stefan or the, or the Mac? Because everything is planned obsolescence at these, at this point, motherboard fan control, also water cooling. Yeah. I need to know more about that, Brandon, because I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to deal with that. Maybe you can throw in a link for all of us if you wouldn't mind if there's something that can be linked to that I can learn from. Um, oh, Stefan, yeah, StreamYard. So, yeah, you can also do donations there. I'm going to look at this since you've posted it, Stefan. Um, uh, they they did use this on the on the 24-hour live stream. They were taking in um, money from from that they were they had a donation box it was very configurable in obs it worked great their stream never went down that's a testament to obs right 24 hours with allison and and Brexit, their stream never went down once and it was clean as a whistle there were people who stayed all 24 hours with them they stayed awake <laughs> crazy all right um moving on yeah horsepower is great but i actually hate windows brandon you and me both but you work in it can you use a Windows mouse? Have you ever used a mouse on a laptop? Oh my God, not, not that my, my Mac is that much better, but um, 
Let's see, vote is best. Jeff says, hi, Peter. Peter? Jeff is saying hi. Um, uh, so frustrating. I feel like Mac is just, you know, we all, but that's the thing, Skip. It's like we're all feeling this, you know, and there are people who deal with Windows who also are going to feel like Dell or, or Asus or, or Toshiba's yanking their chain. This is all, it's just that it's our, it's, it's the devil we know. And it's this one central lightning rod for us to throw all of our CPU angst at. That's why, you know, Tim, thank God for Tim Cook in some ways. Um, okay, Corsair. Oh, wow, thank you. Liquid cooling from, from Brandon Epperson. But this is a wink or is this a frown, your emoji? Because I'm just not that emoji literate. So you might need to tell me if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you. Um, Yes, it's true, Sami, especially if it says Nicholas Viom. There, 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 were, there was a work, they had a workshop and he had a lot of people. I forget what the number is. I, oh, in fact, I, I'll stop now because I don't know that history. So I shouldn't be speaking about it. Um, oh, wow. Okay, Brandon, mouse is the most important interface. It's true. Goodness. Asus is what you use. Yeah, is that a Razer or what, what's a Ryzen, uh, Brandon? I've, just, I've been seeing these brands come through. Asus WS boards are, WS means Asus Windows System boards? Um, WS boards. Definitely paid way too much for an iPad Pro. Oh my God, Stefan, let's just talk about that. Let's just talk about the iPad. This is ridiculous, what we can do with an iPad. It is my most trusted device. And not only that, but if I go into, into that room over there, that's, that's my walk-in closet. That's also my vocal booth. It's used more for that. It's got U-Haul blankets stapled up with a staple gun, courtesy of my dear friend Paul DeYoung, who gave me all these extra blankets in his staple gun, which I need to give back. And um, anyway, it's plastered in there with that. Um, and, and why was I saying that? Um, oh, so my iPad, when I have that in there with my mid-side configuration, I've come controlling Logic um, or Pro Tools and and my iPad, and I'm able to do a, a complete recording session in complete quiet while running the computer that's out here. Thanks for the iPad Pro, Tim Cook, or whoever did that. Um, razors, yeah, Razors, right. Do oh, Workstation, got you. Thanks, Brandon. Wow, yeah, there's, well, let me let me give you a couple things, Stefan. Um, here are a couple things in, in iPad land. Um, I'm kind of loath to do this. Maybe I'll do this on a on another live stream at some point, but I'm not quite ready to do it now. With Ecamm Live, I can quickly hook. <laughs> I'm not doing it now because I'm scared to, but I could take my iPad and show you some programs. But here are the ones I use that I love, and I know that Skip will have some too. Um, Borderlands Granular. Borderlands is also, I think, a big video game, but this is Borderlands Granular. It's Granular Synth. Sampler without an E, is also an awesome one. Of course, don't forget the, um, what's the one called for Ableton? Oh. I've kind of forgotten it because it's kind of catch as catch can sometimes in the usage department. Um, anyway, we're into laptop. Uh, nice. So, so we've got Mac people and we've got Windows people here. It's just there's there are reasons for everything, and I think that uh, you know, learning a couple of different languages is always is always nice, and having a couple ways of getting things done is always nice. So anyway, listen, it's two thirty. I've been on here for an hour. I think it's kind of kind of a long winded Facebook Live, especially for every everybody else to watch later. Sorry, I just popped my peas. Um, let me begin to say goodbye. Oh, there isn't an Ableton iOS device, Stefan, in terms of, there's an Ableton iOS control device. Where is my iPad? Is it there? No, it's not there, right? It's okay. It's okay. It's, um, if it's called touchable, Stefan, it's called touchable. T-O-U-C-H-A-B-L-E dot com. Uh, $50. Um, we'll get you, um, oh, you still have a cheese grater, Brandon? This is great. One of my favorite, favorite old terms, a cheese grater. I never got a tower. I never had a tower desktop. Uh, I mean, that not, I don't mean tower, I mean trash can. Is that what they call them? Trash cans? I forget, but the little, little circular ones, cylindrical ones. 
So listen, you all, um, it's nearly an hour of live streaming. I didn't expect to get into a huge conversation and I'm thrilled to get into a huge conversation. Thank you so much for hanging out and uh, and uh, talking with me. And whoever watches this later, I hope that, uh, that you find some stuff that's helpful in this conversation. And uh, thank you for being our being part of our third episode of uh, of our of our first live streaming week. And uh, in these videos, I'll I'll put something in the comments to notify you if we do something else. But uh, it's been it's been just awesome hanging out and talking with you. Thanks for joining us. I wish you safety. I wish you peace. I wish you a wonderful Memorial Day. And uh, and until we meet again. Uh, you know, stay well. Thanks. <laughs>